Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 30, we will cover two financial functions, payment and rate. Let's start with the payment function to calculate monthly and bi-weekly payments for a loan or mortgage. I'm going to buy a house and the interest rate is going to be 3.25%. The mortgage will be paid off in 30 years and I plan to borrow $320,000 from the bank. Now assume the interest rate won't change, what will be the monthly payment? Well, let's start by typing in the payment function. And you can see this function has five arguments. The first is rate, and this will be our annual interest rate of 3.25%. But since we're looking for monthly payments, I'm going to divide this by 12, which is the number of months in a year. The second argument is NPER, which stands for number of payments. I have 30 years to pay the mortgage, but again, I'm looking to make monthly payments. So I'm going to do 30 times 12 to find the number of months in 30 years, which is equal to 360. The third argument is present value, and that's the amount of money I need to borrow now. This will be equal to the $320,000. Now the next two arguments are in brackets, which means they're optional. The fourth argument is future value, and that's the amount that will be left unpaid at the end of the 30 years. Now in our case, this will be zero, and if you choose to omit this argument from the function, its default value is always zero as well. Now the last argument is type, and for this example, we'll choose one, which means the payment is made at the beginning of the period. If I press enter, you can see the functions work, but it's in a red color and in parentheses. This means that this is a cash outflow, so that's money that is leaving your wallet. I'm gonna quickly add in some cell referencing here so we can play around with that type argument a bit. So just one second. All right, so I'm just gonna drag this down here and I'm gonna change that one at the end to a zero. So you can see now this means that we are making the payment at the end of the period. So there's a couple dollars difference between both numbers. I'm gonna drag this down again here, and I'm gonna actually remove both of those optional arguments to see what number we get as well. So if we omit the last two arguments, we get the same answer as if the payment is made at the end of the period. So I'm going to add actually some notes in here just to make it a bit clearer for us. Now let's assume instead of making monthly payments, I'm going to make bi-weekly payments, which means I'm going to make a payment once every two weeks. So I'm going to start again with the payment function, and this time the rate will also be the 3.25%, which is the annual rate, but remember, we're looking for the bi-weekly payment. So that means we're going to divide the annual rate by 26. Now you might be wondering why 26, and that's because there are 52 weeks in a year, which means that there are 26 bi-weekly periods in a year. The next argument is number of payments, and that's going to be the 30 years times 26, and that determines the number of bi-weekly periods in the 30 years. The next argument is present value, and that's going to be the amount of the loan. Now remember, the future value argument is optional, so let's try omitting it this time to see what happens. And then finally, for type, let's select 1, which stands for beginning of the period. So there we go. I will leave you guys to calculate the bi-weekly payment made at the end of the period this time. Here is just a quick summary slide of the uh, example we just covered. I always try to list the annual interest rate and number of years to pay off the mortgage. Then I find it's a bit clearer to make the table below uh, to convert the end per and rate to the correct payment frequency. Now let's move on to the rate function and we'll use the same example. So remember N per, which was the number of payment in years was 30. The payment amount, and we'll go back here to check, and we'll use the payment at the beginning of the pay period, is this number. And that number needs to be negative since it represents a cash outflow, which is money leaving your wallet. 
and then the present value is equal to the $320,000. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the rate function here. And the first argument now is n per. So that'll be the 30, but since we have the monthly payment, we need to multiply the 30 by 12 to find out how many months are in those 30 years. The second argument is payment, and that will be the monthly payment amount. And then the third argument is present value, which will be the amount of the loan. Now the next three arguments are optional. If you don't specify anything for future value, it automatically defaults to zero, which is okay in this case. So we'll just leave the future value argument blank. And then for type, we'll specify a one, which means the payment occurs at the beginning of the period. And then for that final argument, we'll just ignore it for now. So when we get that answer, it doesn't seem correct because we are expecting to get the annual interest rate of 3.25%. But this actually is the correct answer. It's just in the form of the monthly interest rate. To get the annual interest rate, all I need to do is take the monthly interest rate and multiply it by 12. And you can see by doing that, we get the correct answer. That concludes our lesson for today. We covered the payment function that can be used to calculate monthly or bi-weekly loan and mortgage payments. And we also covered the rate function, which can be used to calculate interest rates. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next lesson.